is the path to Y, and ACE is the path to Z. And so you can think of these as paths. Um, part of what we're doing is we're coming up with ways to walk through and parse uh, trees of XML data. So the next thing we'll talk about is how we determine if a particular XML document is legal or uh, meets the contracts that two applications have set up. We're going to do a little bit of code. If you want to get your hands on the code, go to the materials uh, website, uh, materials.php, actually uh, materials.php, and uh, download the sample code. Um, the code that we're going to work on today is the XML code, and uh, we need to be able to talk XML uh, to work with web services. And so here's one of the examples from the book. It's XML1.py. And so later we'll be pulling uh, XML and JSON from the web, but for now we're just going to put it in a triple quoted string, uh, so data. And we're going to use a built-in XML parser in Python called Element Tree. And when we say import XML eTree element tree as ET, this as ET gives us basically a, uh, a shortcut handle for it. And so the idea, this is a string. It has less thans and greater thans. It looks like structured information, and it is. But really, at this point, it's only a string. Now, we have to call this ET from string to read this and give us back a tree object. And what it does is this might blow up. This code might blow up right here if there was a mistake in it. Okay. And, um, Matter of fact, I can probably put a mistake in. Let's see if I can delete this and save it and run this code, and we'll see that it will blow up. Right? And so it blew up here in line 8. Element tree blew up. In, or in, I mean, it, it blew up in line 12 of the code, which is right here. This failed because the line 8 of the XML string was wrong. So let's put the slide, uh, that back in. So now it's properly formed XML. So this tree we get back, I name it tree just because I always name it tree, but you could name it X. So the key is, is tree.find goes and looks for a tag name find, and it, it, tree is no longer got less thans and greater thans in it. It is went and, uh, and turned these into objects within objects within objects. So tree find name says, I would like to find the tag name and that's what this bit is right here and then dot tx dot text is going within that and grabbing that text okay and if we say tree find dot email then that's going to give us this and then that's that object and then dot get asks for the contents of the hide attribute which is the string yes okay and so if we run this now that it's fixed python 3 xml one dot py it will pull in and get the at the name and the attribute. So it's it pulled the chuck out. And so you get this object and then you kind of dive into that object. And so that's XML1.py. If you've got a tag, you can either get the text out of the tag or you can get an attribute out of the tag. So now let's take a look at XML2.py. Again, we import element tree and we have a tag. And there's XML's always got to have a single outer tag. But this time we're going to have, in effect, a list. Um, now let's, let's line this up a little better. There we go. That looks a little prettier. Um, and so users, not the, the fact that it's users doesn't mean anything, but we often uh, come up with semantically meaningful names for these things. Users is going to have, as its children, a list of user tags. Okay, so the children under user, users, user under user. And then this has each of these as a tag. So we want to parse this. And this is a common thing we want to do. Um, you know, and so again, the first thing we do is we read the string to just take this. It's a triple quoted string going from here to here. And then we're going to, instead of doing find, which gives us one tag, we're going to do find all the users tag, the user tag that is a child of users. And we get back a Python list of the tags, not of the text, but of the tags. So there's a one tag, and there is another tag. And so we can do len of that, so we can see that we got two. And then we can write a for, for loop, and the, this item is going to iterate through the tags that are the user tags that are children of users. So the first time item is going to be this tag, a tag, remember, 
and then the second time it's going to be this tag. And so we can do things like find and, and get just like we did with the in XML1. So running this is not too exciting, Python 3 XML2.py. You see that there are two users that comes from this print right here. There are two users in there. And the first one, if we go into name and we go find the text within the name tag within user, then we get Chuck and we get the ID, which is 001. So we find the ID within that item and then we get the text. And then we look and we grab the X attribute um, off of that. And so we see Chuck Chuck 001 and 2, and then the, in the next tag, we the for loop continues, and we print that out. Okay, and so that's just a basic run through of the the XML from uh, the the, cha the chapter in the Python book. Okay, thanks. So now we're going to talk a little bit about XML schema. XML schema is a language that allows you to decide on whether or not a particular XML document meets a contract, an arrangement. So you have two pieces of software exchanging data using XML. And what if one of them, if they're all working, nobody really worries too much about it. But if all of a sudden one breaks, you change one side and the other one breaks, whose fault was it, right? Was it the side that got changed or the other side? And so you could argue. So what you tr like to do is before you set up these arrangements between these applications, set up a contract. In a way, they're kind of like the RFCs are, except that their scope is between pairs of applications. And so it, is, it itself is XML. And um, it, it basically, what we do is we, we take an XML document and an XML schema contract, and then we either say that's good or that that is bad. And that's called validation. A piece of software that validates XML when given a schema is called a validator. And so an XML document, here we have our little XML document, we're passing it to the validator. And then we have a schema contract, which is a itself XML, it's kind of a particular kind of XML, that XS colon complex type. That's just a tag, colon is a legitimate character for the name of a tag. Name equals person, that's just an attribute. And so XML schema is a particular format of XML that, a lot, that, that renders an opinion about what XML is supposed to look like. So there's a number of different XML schema languages. The one we're going to look at is one that's kind of came a little bit later, that's very common, um, called XSD, which is the World Wide Web Consortium's uh, schema specification. Often you'll find files that have suffixes of .xsd that actually contain the XML, just like we're going to show you. So if you recall, there are simple elements which have text children, um, and then there are complex elements where other, other no nodes are, are children of other nodes. And so we can say this. And so here we have a little bit of XML and the XML schema that makes sense with that. So um, what we're saying is the outer tag of this legitimate XML is supposed to be a complex tag with a name of person. And so there we go. That looks good, good, good. Then there is a sequence, and then there is a simple element, a name of last name, looks good, and it's a string, that looks good. Uh, uh, another tag that's of, in, of, ty of a named age that's of type integer, that's good. And then a, a thing that's called date born, and then there it looks like a date. So we check all these things, and we can basically say, yup, you know, that is a good XML document according to this schema. And, you don't have to write this generally, but there is software that reads these two things and comes back with a true or a false and might even have some detail as to what went wrong uh, with this particular schema. Here's some more that you can do with a schema. Um, we can do things like, you know, have a complex type, we have a sequence. Here we have a string full name and a string child name. But we have this min occurs and max occurs. So min occurs is the minimum number of times it can occur, and maximum is the maximum. So min occurs equals one, max occurs equals one means it's required. And so this is required, and we don't have two of them. Two of them would be an error. One of them is fine, so that's good. Here, the child name is uh, min occurs zero, max occurs 10. So we have four here, and so that's good too. And so that is another kind of XML schema constraint that you can have. Here's a few other data types that we can do. 
Uh, we've done the string, we've done